Good evening, I'm back with the circular saw blade sharpener. Um, I already did the unboxing video and I played with it for several hours that night and I've sharpened several saw blades on it since then. I thought I'd do a follow-up of the unboxing to show you how you actually use the device. So I went and got a crappy saw blade. As you can see, it's really crappy. Uh, somebody gave this to me to make knives out of and I've collected these over the years and I probably have about a hundred blades and surprisingly enough there's very few of them that aren't carbide tipped. I have a bunch of them anywhere from four inches to 20 inches that uh, people have given me over the years so at some point I probably need to make uh, knives out of them because that's why I got them. But I got this one if I run this one actually if I do anything to this one it ain't going to matter. I would never use this on wood, although this is a circular saw blade. If you did uh, two befores and stuff, it probably wouldn't matter if it was sharp. But still, I wouldn't use it. Okay, so if you put this, um, if you put a saw blade on a mount, the teeth have to point this way. Have a self-centering arbor. It's got a little lip on the very end of it, and it goes down in here. It's going to work best, I think, on five-eighths arbors. It's self-centering, and if you're turning this in a circle and you're cutting the face of these teeth, if it's slightly off-center, it's not going to matter. But if you're trying to file the tops of these flat, it is going to matter, and this is not perfectly centered. So I haven't figured out, I haven't figured out a solution to that yet. But you put the arbor on, you've got a spring to give uh, tightness, but still let it rotate. So you put that on. And I found that when you're first setting up a blade, you're better off to loosen this. This is the ratcheting action. So we'll loosen that. Well, and we'll try it again. So we'll loosen that. So what you want to do is adjust this arm so that the flat of this tooth is square to this motor. The flat of this tooth is square to the blade and you want to pull the motor all the way in. So once I get this saw blade on there, I loosen this end and I bring this over and I want to take the blade so that it is flat against the sharpening blade. And I only want to do maybe the first three thirty seconds quarter inch of the blade so once i get that lined up i'll hold it in place and i'll tighten this as you can see that's a nice flat fit against the sharpening blade that way i'll just take off an even amount and keep the angle the same on that tooth so now that i have that i'll bring this over and you have to get it in a way that it the, the next tooth or this tooth can rest up against the stop so that when you rotate it, it's always in the same position. So this is adjusted optimally. So I'll loosen, I'll loosen this set screw at the bottom. That will let me turn this. So I can either adjust it way back here. So that is the... Uh, stop on the second tooth. I don't want that. I want to go out two teeth So I will come out here And I will set this that's where I want that so once I get this I'll show that a little show you another angle. I want that to set against that tooth. So when I rest it against the saw blade here It's rest against here and I get a consistent uh, position so I need to tighten this first to get the to set this angle. Once I have that set, I'll make sure that it's tight against the blade and I'll pull it back against this blade and then tighten this. I don't know why they didn't put nice knobs like this one down here. It would make this a lot easier. So I want to make sure these are really tight because I'll be pressing against them as I sharpen the blade. As you can see, I'll pull the motor back and 
test this. I should touch that blade as I come forward, and it is, but that is not how you use it. Using it, you actually come back a quarter of an inch off of this, pull the motor forward, and then set the saw blade against the cutter, and that way it'll sharpen the face without digging into it. So start with it back. So I'll turn it on, pull the motor forward, set the blade against the stop, and that'll in turn push it against the cutting blade. Pull that all the way back, do the ratchet action, go a, a quarter inch from here. Now the reason you want to do the quarter inch from here is if you set it against that and bring that forward, you're going to hit that blade and cut down it. You don't want to cut down it, you want to cut across it. So I'll do the ratchet action again, come forward about a quarter inch, pull the blade forward. Sharpen the blade. That'll sharpen the tooth. So I do the ratchet action, come forward a quarter inch, pull it forward, and just keep repeating this. Now when I pull that blade against the cutter, you'll feel it cut, dig in, but then it, as it cuts away, you can feel it get less. I think you can hear that. So we'll do this again. Do the ratchet, come back a quarter inch. Cut the next tooth. Ratchet, quarter inch, next tooth. Ratchet, quarter inch, next tooth. Ratchet, quarter inch. So you can see I'm pulling the blade, I'm pulling the saw blade into the sharpening blade. And it's pressing against this so I get a consistent cut. So back off a quarter inch, then pull the blade into the sharpener. And you see there what happened if I don't pay attention, I'm going to hit the back of the, the next tooth. What I'm going to do is turn this off and take the blade off. I know it's in the middle and I should finish. I want to take a look at the blade. So what, why I did it now is I want to look at a, a tooth I've, I want to look at a tooth I've cut and a tooth I haven't cut. Wow, that's not showing very good. So there we go. This tooth is cut, this one isn't. So you can see the dramatic difference between the two. I can see all the shiny edges that I've got on these, but I haven't got them on these. So that's showing really good how it's sharpening it. Now this is one crappy blade. I probably wouldn't use it. And it actually doesn't feel that sharp. I'll probably have to go around twice. But I'd rather go slow and go twice than go once and do something bad to the blade. So as you can see, it's working exactly how it's supposed to. So I'll see if I can't get it back on there the way it was. At Arbor Self Centers. It fits down in like this. So it doesn't quite fit, but it's made that way so it'll do any size blade. I'm not sure how big a blade we can get on this, but I have some bigger blades we'll try. So we'll tighten that down actually reconsidered this is probably the last time that I'll sharpen a non-carbide tip with the diamond blade. I'd rather save the diamond blade for carbon tip and use the uh, normal use the normal stone for anything that isn't carbide tip. I think you can go to Harbor Freight and get a set of these uh, the emery blade and the diamond blade for I think it's less than ten dollars. Next time I'm there, I'll probably pick one up. Let's get started again and see if putting the blade back on left at the same position. So go against the stop, back off a quarter, bring the blade in, sharpen it.
And that's once around. I'll do a couple of blades because at the beginning I might not have been consistent. There, I hit the back of that tooth again. Okay, so theoretically that's sharp, and it sharper than it was. I'm not saying it's super sharp. I've seen a lot sharper. And I think the problem is I need to do two things. I need to file this side, which is what it's doing, but I'd like to do a little bit of this side. But I got to tell you, other than scraping it across the uh, edge of this blade, I have not found a way to cut this with the way this is set up. Okay, so there's basic sharpening on the blade. Um, an old blade like this, I probably want to go through twice, and I would want to file the outside of this. I have to find a way. It's hard to find an angle that the back of this blade will hit that without hitting this cover. And those are safety covers. I could take those off, but I'm not sure I want to. Okay, so things that I like and don't like about this. It has the indexer, which does work. It keeps it in the same place all the time. Somewhat impressed with that. I noticed that one of these teeth didn't make contact like the others. I don't know if that is some error in the adjustments uh, as we go around, or if that is a defect in the original blade where all of them weren't the same. I'm not sure it matters. If you go around a couple times, you're going to get a consistent finish on them anyway, and they'll all be the same shape. I need to bolt it down to a table to stop vibration, keep it from moving while I'm working. These knobs are actually good. The centering arbor seems to work okay. This, it's kind of hard to get it to the right height. I'm kind of sorry I took it off because it'll take me a while to get it right. And in case you're wondering, I had that too high. So I'm just going to lower it. Right. This ratcheting action is extremely hard to get lined up. You've got to get this in the right place. If you loosen this even the littlest bit, it starts moving around. Uh, I'd like to see a different adjustment, but in all honesty, I'm not sure what would be different that would be better. I think I'd like to set this with the Allen wrench. I'm probably okay with that. Probably okay with setting this with an Allen wrench but have this be a knob that you turn and make it more easily adjustable. By the time you get it in the right place and you grab the wrench to tighten this, a lot of times you've knocked it off center so when it gets together, you have to go back, readjust everything. And of course, there's all kinds of grit. And that's why I said I'm not gonna use the diamond bit on non-carbide tip blades because part of that is from the saw and part of that is from that diamond blade. So I've, I'm gonna shorten the life of that diamond blade by using it on cheap blades. I'd rather save it for carbide tip. And this stuff is everywhere. It's extremely fine dust. So now that it's done, let's take a look at the blade. You almost need dust collection on this. So let's see if we can't look at this blade again. Let me see uh, how it sharpened the teeth. Now until I put this in something and use it, I wouldn't know how good it's going to do. But I have, I'm very happy with, but I'm very happy with the way it's turned out. Obviously, it's sharpening every tooth. With the index system, they should be the same. I don't know that I would use this particular saw blade. So I happen to have another one that I did when I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. Um, it's a lot different angle blade, but the machine handled it just fine. As long as you set the index correctly, so that seems to be sharper. Now this one's a lot sharper. It's catching my fingers as the points are catching my fingers as it go around. So 
I kind of like this. And the reason I bought this, even on a blade like this, if you look straight onto it, there is a angle on the top of this. I stack a couple of these together as a dado blade, I'll get a wave design in the wood instead of a flat bottom. So that's one of the reasons I bought this was so I could be able to flatten those tops. I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. So I'll show you the back of this. There's the on off switch. It's a nice little motor. It's not that powerful, but it doesn't need to be that powerful. These need oil. I can feel that now. Which is a problem if I oil those and they're going to collect all the grit that's there. Uh, I think I'd rather oil them. Now, if you want to canter this motor one way or the other, there is an adjustment here, and they have little markings to show you zero degrees, 10 degrees. So you could put a bevel cut on the face of these so that it's at an angle like this. Personally, I just want them flat. I'm, never, I'm probably not gonna use that, but it is available if you do wanna use it. It has this safety cover in all honesty, from my viewpoint, it's just going to get in the way, so I leave it up all the time. I did put it on so that I won't lose it in case I ever want to use it, but I don't think I'll ever use it. One of the reasons I picked these two blades is the extreme different angles on the teeth. This one is straight up and down, and this one is at an angle this way, maybe 45 degrees. But the machine, in the way that you adjust this back and forth, in and out will accommodate either of those. The key is to lay the flat piece of the tooth against the cutter head. And there's the flat piece of the tooth, and that's what makes it sharp. So, there's two blades sharpened. This one, I'll probably never use. But it is, it is sharpened. You can clearly see where it's been sharpened. I would like to have a finer grit or the option to have a finer grit on this because if I just need a saw that's, if I have a saw blade that just needs touched up, like right before I'm working with some really nice wood, I might want to touch up a saw blade. Well, I want a finer grit in there. I don't want a rough cutting grit. And if I had really nice blades, I would use a, gr a coarse grit, then I would use a fine grit but they only have these two blades available. That's all there is for it. I think you could probably go somewhere else and buy them, probably. So there's my uh, demonstration of how to use the circular saw blade sharpener. I think you could sharpen a lot of different size blades on this. I'll do an update video using a much bigger blade and I'll post a video later of how I filed the tops off of some of the blades that I have as an experiment. Uh, don't try that with expensive blades. Work out all the kinks with uh, cheap blades. It takes a while to get the uh, combination right of where this needs to go and how this needs adjusted. And this is extremely hard to set. It has three grooves and you can put them in each of those. I'm not sure what advantage that's going to give you uh, with the way that this moves, but it is there if you would need it. So I've covered the unboxing, I've covered the initial setup, and I've covered sharpening a blade. How to adjust the all the different parts. So I think I've done a pretty good job of covering everything. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment. Uh, I could do an update video if I have missed something anyone's interested in. I'm impressed with this. I like it. I think it will sharpen blades quickly, accurately. I think it is a pain in the ass to set up this arm. But you get used to it. The more you sharpen, the faster you get on the setup, the faster you figure out how, the faster you get on the setup, and the easier it is to actually do the setup. So, I recommend you buy this. I think that this was about $40 uh, when I bought it. I had a 20% off coupon and it was on sale. So I think it was $42. Uh, I thought that was very reasonable. I'd probably spend half of that building one myself. So I recommend you get it if you have saw blades that you want to sharpen. If you like the videos, please like the videos. 
If you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. I release a new video every Monday. And randomly through the week, I usually release at least one other one. So please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.